Hello everyone and how are you all doing today? So today we're going to be doing yet another past paper question for the ACCA performance management exam. And the past paper question we're doing today is from the March June 2019 past paper and it relates to the topic of financial and non-financial analysis. So this type of question is by far the most popular and commonly tested question in section C of the ACCA performance management exam. How popular is it? Well, it's appeared in pretty much each and every sitting over the past few years in one version of the exam or another, right? So it's highly likely that you will get this question if you're going for the uh, performance management exam in the upcoming sitting, okay? So they've re released a few types of questions like this in the past paper. So this one is called Best Night Co. Another uh, version of this question can be found in the September 2016 exam which is Jungle Co, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the methodology on how you should go about answering this question and certain pitfalls you need to look out for based on the examiner reports, etc. okay? So without further ado, let's get into the question itself. As always, we're gonna start by reading the requirement, okay? Now the requirement for this question is always going to look like this. It's going to be a very small requirement and all it's going to say is, Using the information provided, discuss, in this case, Best Night Go, the company's financial and non-financial performance for the year, okay? And note, they'll always give you a note and tell you there are a certain amount of marks available for calculations and a certain amount of marks available, available for discussion. So out of the 20 marks, in this case, the split is 5 marks for calculations and 15 marks for discussion. But there can be variations. There could be seven marks for calculation, 30 marks for discussion, and so on. Usually there'll be a smaller chunk for calculations and a larger chunk for discussion. Now, what does this indicate? This indicates that we mustn't go by a method that students usually go by and just do as many calculations, calculate as many ratios as you can, etc., and then make a few points. No. Rather, the focus should be on the analysis. The calculations should be supplementing the analysis rather than the other way around. Because if you do a lot of calculations, you're still going to, only going to get five marks, okay? So the way we go about it is, and the examiner recommends this as well, whenever you do a calculation, make a corresponding point for it or a corresponding few points for it so that you get marks for the calculation and for the discussion as well. Doing a standalone calculation for which you can't really make much of an analysis is not really beneficial, okay? So whenever we do a calculation, we must make a corresponding analysis point for it. At least one, if we can make more than one, sure, by all means, right? So now let's talk about how we're gonna approach the question and how we're gonna structure our answer. So as always, we'll start by labeling, this is question number 32, there are no parts, so we'll just make this bold and put this column to the side so that it doesn't mix up with the rest of our uh, answer, okay? Now, the way we go about structuring our answer, there's two possible ways that I can think of that you should go. Ideal, uh, either you can make an appendix where you do all your calculations and put references next to each calculation and then you do the analysis above or below that appendix, okay? That's one way. The other way, which I personally recommend is that you put your headings for different areas. So for example, in this case, we have uh, revenue, we have operating costs, right? Operating profit. Then we have these other metrics, uh, other performance information. So you make a heading for each particular issue that you want to discuss, like for example, revenue, do all the relevant calculations and next to those calculations, make your relevant points for that issue, right? That's what I personally prefer to have the calculation and the point next to each other so that you don't need to go back and forth too much uh, and the marker doesn't need to go back and forth too much either, right? His job becomes easier as well. So that's the approach we're gonna be following. Now, how do we go about answering the question? So the way we go about answering the question is always start at the top and start reading sentence by sentence. But whenever you come across a sentence for which you feel that you can make a point, stop there and do some analysis and then we move on, okay? So let's start. It says best night go operates a chain of 30 hotels across the country of Estland. It prides itself on the comfort of rooms in its hotels and quality of services it provides to guests, okay? The majority of West Night Coast hotels are located in major cities 
and have been previously successful in attracting business customers. In recent years, however, the number of business customers has started to decline as a result of tough economic conditions in S-Land. Okay, so we have a point here. That's tough economic conditions in S-Land and the number of business customers has started to decline. What do we expect to happen because of this? Well, we would expect that less customers means less revenue and possibly less profit. So now that we have a potential point, we're going to look at the numbers and the do any calculations necessary to see whether this point is substantiated or not, okay? So if we go down to the numbers, they've given us a summary of the management accounts for two years, for 2016 and 2017. And let's start with the revenue because that's what's going to be impacted. Now, the thing is revenue is broken down into all these different categories. So rather than analyzing all the uh, everything collectively, so some, what some students will do is they'll, they'll just look at the total revenue. No, if they've given you the breakup, we should analyze each and every category separately and then we can analyze them collectively. This brings us to another important point. How do we go about analyzing these things? Well, whenever they give you two different years, you need to find the percentage change between the balances between the two years, okay? Not the absolute change. So you're not gonna say 111, 890 minus 104, 976 to find the change in revenue. The examiner always stresses he does not want that. Rather, you want to give the percentage change. So you'll take the value for this year minus the value for the previous year over the value for the previous year, okay? So let's start, we we'll put a heading. So we're dealing with revenue right now. So revenue is our heading, okay? And we'll put our number. So we have revenue from rooms. Then we have room discounts, okay? Then we have other revenue, which is from food and drink. And we have the total, okay? We have the balance for 2017 or 20x7 in this case and 20x6, okay? And we'll put a column for percentage change, okay? So let's just format this a bit. We'll drag this out, we'll make these bold. We'll put these in the center since these are headings, right? And we might need to drag, let's drag all of these columns out a bit. So maybe like this, okay. So we have our columns. Let's fill out the numbers. So 111, 890 and 104, 976, okay. Be careful when typing in the numbers originally. It's very easy to make a typo and you don't want that because it will put your calculation off balance, right? But even if you make a typo, as long as your formulas are correct, you won't lose all your marks. You'll still get marks for the analysis if it's done correctly, okay? The percentage change column will need to format it as a percentage. Let's put it to two decimal places. Okay. And these numbers will be accounting based so that it's easier to read them, right? Uh, since they're whole numbers, we don't need to worry about the decimals. Okay. Let's copy this formula down. And now let's just key in our numbers. So discount, we have 16783. And we have 11,540, okay? And we have 24,270. And we have 23,185, okay? Now we could potentially key in the total, but rather instead of that, let's put in the sum function. Why? Because if our number here matches the number there, that means we have no typos, right? So they match, so there's no typos. And we'll do the same here just to double check. So 116,621, again, there are no typos, okay? And the total we can make bold just for because it's a total right okay so what's the story here we were told that the economy has fa is facing tough conditions so the number of customers has started to decline okay now what's been happening here we can see that the revenue has actually increased in all categories right so revenue from rooms has increased by 6.6%, but the room discount, so this is not revenue, this is the discount given, has increased drastically by 45%, and other revenues increased by 4.6%, okay, overall revenue by 2.3%. So despite the bad economy, the revenue seems to have increased by a bit. But why? One glaring reason is already there, right? The discounts. Do they mention anything about discounts? Maybe they do down the line, let's see. 
before we make our point, let's see what they say about discounts. Okay, so it says best price, uh, best night course policy is to set standard prices for the rooms in each of its hotels with the price reflecting the hotel's location and taking account of competitive prices. Okay, however, hotel managers have the authority to offer discounts to regular customers and to reduce prices when occupancy rates in their hotel are expected to be low. The average standard price per night across all rooms was $140 in 2017 and $135 in 2016. So a lot of points we can make here, but first let's talk about the discount. The hotel managers have the authority to offer discounts to regular customers and reduce prices when the occupancy rates are expected to be low. And as we can see, they've tremendously increased the discounts by 45% compared to last year. If you're offering disc more discounts, obviously customers will, uh, there'll be more customers, okay? And they've talked about occupancy rates. Let's see if that's mentioned somewhere. So yeah, we have average occupancy rates down here, okay? So notice what we're doing. Whenever we get a hint somewhere up here, we go and see if there's any corresponding numbers for it, right? That's the way you want to go in these questions. So it says average occupancy rates, note two, and they've actually increased from 72 to 74%, okay? So note two says occupancy rates for the year ended 30 June, 2017 were budgeted at 72%. So the occupancy also increased more than the budget and last year, even though the economy has been going down. And the reason for that likely is this discount over here, right? So with several points that we can make, let's start, okay? So we'll start by mentioning the economy. The economy of uh, S-Land has been deteriorating, which would imply that revenue is expected to fall. However, as we can see above, the overall revenue increased by 2.36% despite the poor economy, okay? So we're highlighting what's going on. Now we'll get to the point. One of the reasons for this, one of the reasons for this could be the fact that hotel managers are permitted to offer discounts to offer discounts to customers discounts have increased drastically from last year by 45% right 45.43% okay this would increase the number of customers and therefore the revenue. Hence, due to the drastic decrease increase in discount, the company has been able to offset the impact of the bad economy. Okay, that's one point that we've developed in a lot of detail. So we've gotten a few marks already, but there's more we can talk about. What about the occupancy rate? Again, they're expecting that the number of customers has started to decline, the number of business customers. So it's important that they mention business customers but occupancy rates have gone up. So we could potentially make a point that this has to do with other customers, right? Okay, so let's talk about that over there. Furthermore, the occupancy rates were higher than the budget and the level of last year by 2%, right? And this we can just uh, show over here. Occupancy rate, so it was 74% and 
Oops, this is rounded, so let's just format it. And a question would be, what about the percentage change? Do we need to go by the same formula above to get something like uh, this? Or do we need to say that it's 2% increase because it went from 74% to 72%? Honestly, it depends on you. And then personally, I would say just 2%, but I've seen marking schemes also show the 2.78%, so it's up to you how you go about it, okay? And let's just stick with the 2% for now. But again, you could use 2.78%. We'll just be clear about it, right? So how we got the 2% from 72% to 74%. So there's no confusion, okay? This is again, despite the bad economy, meaning that the uh, discounts attracted more customers. And we can make the point that possibly these are non-business customers, right? It is possible that these new customers are not business related customers who came to the hotel due to the discounts, okay? So we've run the discount point to the ground but there's one, there's more points we can make, right? Because in that same paragraph, they've said the average standard price uh, per night across all rooms has it was one forty dollars compared to one thirty five dollars. So they actually increased their prices, okay? Which is interesting. They've expected the occupancy to remain the same based on the budget of seventy two percent and the last year number of seventy two percent. But and the economy was bad. Yet despite that, they increased the prices. So what's the story there? Okay, so let's just read this last sentence below as well. In addition to room bookings, the hotel will also generate revenue from the additional services available to customers such as restaurants and bars. Okay, so if we look at the increase in revenue from rooms, it's 6.6% .6 compared to the occupancy rate increase of 2.78%. So if the revenue from the rooms is coming from two increases, it's from the increase in occupancy, but that doesn't explain away the entire increase. That means the increase of $140 to $135 also had an impact, but let's see how much of an impact. So we can do the calculation here, right? So we'll say price per room. So it was originally $140, not 140%, $140. So let's copy this format here. Uh, $140 and now it's $135 so that's a percentage increase of 3.7% okay so yeah it's a 3.7 percentage increase that combined with 2.78% around 6.48% so the, the, these two things possibly explain away the revenue from rooms increase but the issue is that there were discounts right there were discounts in the room and that increase would have decreased your overall revenue. So let's see what the increase in revenue from rooms was net of the discounts, right? Net revenue from rooms so that we can completely understand what's going on from rooms. So we'll add these up together and let's see what happens to the percentage. So the net revenue from rooms and the total will have to be changed as well. So this will become this was a 1.79% increase, okay? Below both these things. So in other words, what happened was that in theory, yes, the overall revenue should have increased by around 6.5%, which they did. But given the fact that they gave so many discounts that nullified the impact and it actually only increased by 1.79%. So it's like, didn't even cover the extra occupancy, meaning they actually had an average price per room of even less than the previous year of $135, right? Which is bad. That means their discounts have offset all of their extra price and it's uh, it made it serve no purpose. So let's see how we word this point, okay? So we'll start by saying that the, uh, let's make some head subheadings for this as well, right? So we have economy impact and uh, discounts. So we'll just make that small heading 
so that the examiner can follow easily. Uh, poor economy. Okay, so that's the first two points. Then we'll start talking about discounts. So let's make a subheading for that discounts, right? And now we're going to be talking about the uh, change in price price per room. The price per room was increased from one thirty five dollars to one forty dollars, reflecting an increase of three point seven percent. This was done despite the hotel not expecting an increase in occupancy rate as per their budget. Right? And furthermore, not only were they not expecting an increase in economy, and the economy was going down. This is a strange decision in that context. We can see that this too was nullified due to the high discounts. The overall revenue from rooms increased by 6.59% which is in line with the increases in occupancy and price of 2.78% and 3.7% respectively. Right? Respect respectively. However, the increase in room revenue net of the discounts falls to one point something percent. How much was it? One point seven nine percent. One point seven nine percent. Well below either of these increases. What this means is that not only were the prices dropped significantly, but they were dropped to such an extent that the revenue did not even increase by the level of the occupancy rate increase. Okay. This is a problem. This is problematic as on one side increase in prices is supposed to increase revenue accordingly but the managers are instead being forced to discount to a lower price than even before. This is likely in order to meet the budget targets while uh, uh, overcoming the problems caused by the slowing economy. Okay, so very extensive analysis, but we've broken down it down into subheadings to make it easier for the examiner to follow. So I think we've gone into a lot of detail for revenue. And well, there's still one more point that we can make. There's the other revenue for food and drink. What point can we make about that? So other revenue for food and drink increased by 4.68%. So that's more than 
the increase of net revenue from rooms but not as much as the revenue from rooms okay so again this could mean that uh, customers are it's as in it's fine it's not something very drastic that we can write about because the amount itself is not much uh, to begin with but we can say it's better than the room revenue and that means customers are at least spending more on food and drink okay so food and drink the revenue the revenue from food and drink has increased by a better 4.68% in comparison to the revenue increase for rooms. This is good because it indicates that the customers are spending more on food and drink than previously once they get a room okay so a point there as well okay so that's quite a bit of time spent on revenue let's move on to the operating costs right uh, for that let's also go down to the remaining points as well so again, we shouldn't be focused on doing a calculation first unless we know we can make a point about it, right? So we'll not do the calculation first. Let's just read the rest of the case scenario. Okay, so note one says, capital employed is calculating using depreciated cost of non-current assets at all best night course hotels, okay? And capital employed has increased slightly from the previous year. Occupancy rates we've already talked about. So number three, customer satisfaction score. So that has decreased from 4.5 to 4.2. What's this saying? Customer satisfaction scores are graded on a scale of one to five, where five represents excellent. So they have pretty good scores. On average, in any given town in Estland, the top 10% hotels earn 4.5 or above. So they were in the top 10 previous uh, year. But now they're in the top 25% of hotels, which earn a score of 4.2 or above. So they've fallen in ranking. So what could be a reason for that? Because they've been giving discounts. So why are customers not happy? So it says two themes have become increasingly frequent in the comments, best night goes customers make alongside the score. So these would be the reasons likely. Repeat customers have said that the standard of service in recent visits has not been as good as in previous visits. And if we, what we read at the top was they pride themselves in good service. The rooms need redecorating and the fixtures and fittings need to be replaced. Okay, capital employed basically, but the capital employed has actually increased a bit. For example, the bed needs new mattresses to improve the level of comfort they provide. Best Night Co. had planned a two-year refurbishment program beginning in 2017 of all rooms at each hotel. However, the program has been put on hold due to the current economic conditions and in order to reduce expenditure. So that's what's going on. And so whenever we have capital employed, ROC is a possible uh, calculation we could do as well. So maybe they're trying to increase their ROC, which is why they're not fitting in the furniture and fittings. Okay. So how do we go about this? Uh, let's start by the capital employed increase. Let's analyze that. So big heading capital employed. Okay. Let's just copy the format from above so that we don't have to do too much work. So capital employed. Okay. So we have capital employed which went 39.5 million so 39512123 and we had 39.1 million 39112123 so the capital employed increased by 1.02% so it did increase but not as much as expected because they didn't go for the refurbishment program okay so what would be a reason for that? Well, it says capital employed is calculating using depreciated costs on non-current assets at all best night course hotels, and they're not replacing assets. So that means that one, their capital employed did not increase by as much as expected, but two, their depreciation expense went down. 
right? Because when you keep old assets, depreciation expense goes down. But the customers are not happy with it because the standard of service and the rooms need redecorating, all of that's bad and this customer feedback has gone down. So we'll link all of these points together. So first we'll start. The capital employed has slightly increased by 1.02%. This is not as pronounced as it would have been had the hotel carried out the planned refurbishment. Okay. The reason being given for this is that it was due to the it was due to the economy and to reduce expenditure. It could potentially be done in order to increase profits or other metrics. Okay. So let's talk about what would have happened apart from that. So let's talk about costs. Well, the costs have increased slightly, but we can link this back as well. Let's put a point for operating costs and then we can come back to this. What I want to see is how much is the increase in operating costs. So they haven't split up cost for sales and op uh, operating expenses separately. They've just put them together as operating costs. So let's see what the percentage change there is and maybe we can link a point to capital employed. Okay, so operating costs. Okay, so these are these were 95462 and now these are 92 three seven nine from previous year so there was an increase by three percent the capital employed only increased by one percent and the overall revenue increased by two percent so the operating expenses actually increased more than the revenue despite them trying to cut back on costs okay so that's interesting that means they're not managing their costs properly as well or maybe that's what forced them that their costs were so high that they had to pull back on the refurbishment. So that's how we could tie the point, okay? Anyway, we'll do that once we get there. Uh, let's first finish with capital employed. So we can't link it to operating costs because they've actually increased. Rather, we'll now start talking about the customer satisfaction scores, right? This is harmful to the business as customers have been complaining about the poor furniture and fittings in the room, right? So what will happen is fittings in the room, right? So what will happen is that, uh, well, we'll link that to the customer complaints, but for now we can just say, this will make customers unhappy causing them to potentially go to the competitors instead, okay? And we can now highlight the fact that even though they did this, the expenses actually increased by more than the revenue did. So they didn't really benefit much from doing it anyway. As in, it made the situation somewhat better, but the expenses are still increasing. So they need to actually do a turnaround instead, okay? The operating expenses increased by 3.34%, which is more than the increase in total revenue of 2.36%, right? Okay, what does that mean? It also means that our operating profit margin would have gone down. So if we look at the operating profit margin, so we'll say operating cost and profit margin. Okay, so operating profit margin, in the first year, the operating profit was 23,915. 
23915 divided by the 119 37 oh we have that total so now since we have the number already let's just link it here directly rather than typing it in again and we have uh, 24 oh so profits are actually fallen 24242 divided by the total revenue for the previous year which was uh, 11661 so the profit mar operating profit margin has fallen as well and it's fallen by about 0.75% 0.76% right so let's see what the reason for that is well it's simple the expenses have increased this has resulted in a decrease in the operating profit margin by 0 0.76 percent right this has happened despite ignoring the refurbishment which would have decreased the depreciation costs right what this means is that the company is not managing its expenses well and even after taking uh, actions which are against the long-term interests of the company refurbishment basically we're highlighting that again they are still losing profits okay so what does that mean in the grand scheme of things that what that means is customers are getting unhappier they're taking shortcuts and that means that even their existing revenue uh, is expected to go down in the future because of customer unsatisfaction because remember whenever you have non-financial metrics like average customer satisfaction score the importance of those are that they don't give you the past performance because financial numbers are based on the past historical data they give you the future performance because if customers aren't happy now in the future they're going to stop coming to us so in the future the revenues will fall down even further so that's the last point we can highlight okay so we'll say uh, let's make a heading for conclusion. The hotel is struggling due to the bad economy. The managers are giving very high discounts to try to increase occupancy. However, these are actually not benefiting the revenue growth as they are offsetting any price increases. Furthermore, expenses are increasing this more than revenue despite short-term strategies like delaying purchase of new equipment, new uh, furniture and fittings. In an attempt to reduce costs. This is very problematic as it is causing customer dissatisfaction which can lead to future revenues and the profits decreasing even further than the existing levels. Okay, we haven't made a point about the customer feedback. Uh, let's just make a small point here to wrap it up, right? Customer feedback has fallen 
from 4.5 to 4.2 which has dropped the hotel from the top 10% to the top 25% indicating that the uh, trend ha of has already started right we're tying it in to our existing points okay so we've covered all the major areas we've covered a lot of calculations so what we did was we talked about the percentage change of pretty much all the major metrics covered in the uh, case we've talked about all the major points the poor economy the disc high discounts given for the rooms the price per room we've mixed up the uh, occupancy rates here as well and food and drink right and uh, we've talked about the capital employed what they were trying to do we've speculated on that as well we've discussed that as well okay potentially we could talk about the roc but again depends on the time i think given how much time we've taken we don't need to go into too much detail okay and we've talked about the operating profit margin and the operating costs and most importantly because we've done such a long and thorough analysis We've tied in all the main points and summarized in a conclusion, which I would always recommend to do so that your main points are once again reinforced. Okay. So now again, a question would be, yeah, we could calculate the ROC, etc., and make more points, but do you need to? In the scheme of the exam, I would suggest look at where you are at that point in time. If you're done with everything else and you still have time, sure, enhance the answer even further. But if you still need to do more, you need to do more questions, then the extra ROC calculation and points you'd make might get you a few extra marks, one or two marks here, but the effort and time you'll spend there can easily be made up because you'll get two marks for just doing a theory-based MCQ in the meanwhile, and that'll take you a few seconds, right? So I would say, look at the situation and based on that, go by that situation, okay? So this is how we perform a typical analysis for a question like this a couple of points about where you might find difficulty one as you saw for example for discounts we linked it to a lot of things like occupancy rate etc right so things can get mixed up because occupancy rates were related to discounts which were also related to price per room etc right so always make some subheading so that we can like we did over here so that the there's a story being told right so the examiner can distinguish okay now they're talking about discounts now they're talking about the price per room right give those headings to make your answer at least seem that it has a flow right okay uh always make your headings and like i said put your calculations and points next to each other so that it's easier for the examiner to follow okay so i hope this benefited you guys and i'll see you guys next time